Hey everybody. Uh, hope you all are doing okay during these crazy times. I wanted to put out a video on a very important topic, which is the reason that traders self-destruct. I had recorded some of this video a few days ago, and as I was listening to it, I wanted to put in a new intro. First, this is my website. It's nobsdaytrading.com. I put this on here just because sometimes people aren't sure what my actual site is and there's a few sites out there that are no BS stuff but they're not related to me so sometimes people get confused so this is my actual website if you ever have any questions definitely contact me through here on the contact page it's over there on the right side um, just go to that link and I also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to if you want uh, I never spam I don't send stuff out every week or even every month but if something changes in the market so that I think is very important I'll try to send out an email sort of giving my thoughts on current conditions and it's also how I announce uh, any upcoming classes or upcoming live presentations that I might be giving. So to dig into this particular video, let me just mention something real fast. A little bit later in the video I do show some price action and I, I show it to illustrate the difference in market conditions because market conditions can change quite dramatically from day to day and even hour to hour and one of the reasons people tend to blow up is because they don't understand this very simple simple premise and they'll try to use the same tactic they were using on one day every single day and the reason it's not working is because the day is a different type of day so I do show a little bit of price action later the first part is me discussing the psychological element of basically self-sabotage and I watched a movie yesterday called The Social Dilemma on Netflix every person on planet earth needs to watch this video what it is it's a documentary and they interviewed multiple people who have worked at the big tech companies and some of these people actually helped design the artificial intelligence software that's being used on social media platforms and the level of manipulation is unbelievable. Um, but it's really, the reason I'm mentioning it is because it touches on how people's psychology can change and how they can do things and not even realize why they're doing them. And this is what happens in trading often is the emotional reaction leads to compounding losses, all right? And so the only way for me to explain that really is just by discussing it and so it's the first part of the video is basically me just talking sort of in more like a podcast format so it might seem a little boring at first but I would encourage you to stick with it because honestly the information in this video really does have the potential to save you from blowing up doesn't mean you won't everybody can lose their minds you know on any given day but um, if you at least have a better understanding of what's happening internally then you'll have a better understanding of how to possibly prevent the meltdown. And towards the end of the video, I have also inserted a piece that I recorded separately. It's a, it's a little bit of commentary on a gentleman I know that landed a position at a prop firm. And I would recommend listening to that as well because it offers some insight into how even managers at prop firms often don't give very good advice. So with that, let's continue. For the purposes of this video, let's say that a trader has a strategy that yields better than random results. He actually has found some kind of an edge in his trading. He sees re a repeating pattern and when he makes money, it's not luck. All right. So let's say that he's found that. Now, most people will say, well, if it's not luck, then why does he ever lose? I'm going to tell you why. And this is what's really critical for you to understand as you progress and particularly when you start trading for real money, you know, in uh, large amounts. So a common question that I get uh, on this topic is I frequently have days where I know I should stop because I'm losing and making bad decisions, but I keep trading anyway and I compound the loss. Um, I also cut my winning days too short. I'll make three or four profitable trades and then not take the, the next three trades because I'm scared of losing my profit. And sure enough, those trades would have been profitable as well. Um, this is extremely common. I get this question all the time. Do you have any suggestions on how I can change this behavior? In fact, I do. What you have to understand 
is that humans are hardwired to be uh, basically on alert all the time, right? The world's a dangerous place, can be a dangerous place. And so it's the age-old idea of fight or flight uh, when you are presented with a threat. So when we're trading and we take a loss, our emotional response to that is the same as something physically threatening us or agitating us. So for this example, let's use being cut off in traffic, right? Let's say you're going down the highway at a 70 miles per hour and someone jumps in front of you because they want to cut across to the exit and they could have hit their brakes and you know gone behind you but instead they, they wanted to speed up cut you off and then nearly cause an accident on the highway because you know they're idiots so the emotional agitation and anger that arises in you in that moment is the same thing that arises in you when you lose money uh, trading. However, when you're trading, the only thing that's happening is you're clicking your mouse twice, right? Once to enter, once to exit. And then the numbers in your P&L either go higher or lower. Your digital digits rise or they sink. So when those numbers move lower, it creates immediate anger and agitation. And what the, the reason is because reality did not conform to your expectations. All right, that's most people's problem in all of life, quite frankly. Um, and you feel the need to force reality to bend to your will. And as we know, this is a futile endeavor, but sometimes we undertake the endeavor anyway because we can't help ourselves because of our DNA and hardwiring. Now, the flip side of that, of course, is if the numbers go higher and you make a profitable trade, you have the same sensation as being rewarded in some way, right? You set a goal to lose 10 pounds and you lose 10 pounds and you feel really happy about it. Or you are maybe a musician and you practice a piece and you perform that piece and people give you applause and you feel good about it, right? So this is the same sensation we have when we make money. Um, and that is why people struggle to keep trading even when they're completely in the zone and crushing and making money. They want to protect that because the feeling of losing that reward that you work so hard to earn is actually worse than the anger that you feel uh, if you just lose from the first trade on through the rest of the day. So this obviously is something that you don't want to happen. You don't want to feel these sensations. And professional traders have at some point acknowledged this within themselves and they've worked specifically to become less emotional and to view it in a more computerized fashion. And that is one of the reasons obviously why computers have an advantage. A computer is just looking for the profit. It doesn't care how it gets it. It doesn't feel anything if it takes a loss. It's just playing statistics and it's playing its edge for all it's worth. So I always tell my students, one winning day should make up for three losing days. It shouldn't take three winning days to make up for one losing day. And again, the, the reason this happens naturally, it, the reason it takes three winning days to make up for one losing day is because people become angry and they keep forcing trade after trade after trade and loss after loss after loss. Um, and it hits the point to where they want to destroy their laptop or throw it through the window, right? Now, this is what a lot of educators don't explain very well. If you're zero for four, right, you've made four trades, all are losses. That means you're obviously not seeing it or the conditions are wrong for your strategies. Therefore, you have to stop. Um, if you are four for four, four trades, four wins, you are obviously in the zone and conditions are good for your strategies. Therefore, you should keep trading and press that advantage. New traders suffer from this idea that they should be able to make money every day. There's a magical type of strategy that always makes the money. They might have to wait for it or whatever, but pretty much every day or every week, it should be able to work. And nothing could be farther from the truth. It's possible to develop a strategy that absolutely um, gives you an edge and gives you a profitable result over time. But that strategy 
might only work on days when the market is trending or maybe a person is very good at identifying uh, range days early and he can play the edges of the range back and forth or perhaps a person is very good at spotting reversal points and he's not so good about getting on board a trend but he can figure out when that trend's probably finished and then take a trade going the other way for reversal right so the concept of course is the same you're, you're trying to buy low sell high and just anticipate the next wave of market orders but the conditions vary dramatically depending upon liquidity and volatility. So I want to take just a couple minutes and I'm going to show you uh, the difference in price action in the stock futures indexes uh, on two days that were back to back. So to illustrate how different conditions require a different approach, I'm going to put two days back to back, September 1st and September 2nd of this year, 2020. Uh, and I'm going to just show you why a person might go on a run on one day uh, and be firing on all cylinders, right? Make three, four, five winning trades in a row. And then why on a different day um, that strategy isn't working and that's what can lead to a blow up. So I'm going to start with September 2nd to use an obvious example, all right? What happened on this day is in the afternoon, you can see the time, it's about 3.02 p.m. The uh, stock index futures, and the indexes obviously, began making a run higher. So on the left is the ES, and then this one is the NASDAQ, the NQ. Just to run through this real quick, what would happen is the ES would make a new high, pull back in a little bit, make new highs, pull back in a little bit, make new highs, and it just became really a runaway train uh, to the high side and turned into you know a short squeeze basically and the shorts were all puking to exit their trades and then reversing and going long and, and that's what creates a domino effect as you as you have a market moving higher so for example like if you look at the price the high here was uh, 35.69 and it goes through a little bit to, to 50 pulls in a little bit there back to 68 right 67 goes higher again up to 72 Pulls back in, whew, up to 74.50, right, 75.50, pulls in just a little bit. I mean, these pullbacks are really small. They just, it's only pulling back, you know, one or two points each time. Um, 75, 77, pull back again. See, pull back a little bit here, about two, three points. Uh, there, they pulled back a little bit farther. And then they go again for highs again. And then this is this they started trading a lot of volume um, right around here, around 78. And just to show you, continue, uh, they go on through new highs again, new highs again, new highs again, new highs again, right? All the way up there to 87. So a trader might be very skilled at identifying that type of a, a movement. Um, as it's happening, right? And you just, you can, he can sense it, let's say, and he can see that really there's only two ways to be, either flat, in other words, not in a trade or long. There's just no reason at all to go short and step in front of that kind of a move. And so a guy might be able to play that really well. So he, maybe he has a, a, a really great day because of that. And he's using a uh, strategy that just plays for the high breakout and then he covers, plays the high breakout, covers, buys on the pullback. And maybe he does that multiple times or maybe he's really good at just holding a trade and he's able to ride a trend for 10 or 15 um, points. But that's his thing and that's when he can go on a really good run and, and maybe have seven, eight, 10 winning trades in a row even, you know, or, or maybe let's say eight winning trades, two losses, something like that, um, when the conditions are conducive to his style. Now let's contrast that with the day prior which is September 1st. All right, so 10.05 a.m. on September 1st, the ES is trading at 35.08 even, right? Now, take note of the time, 10.05. What happened here is the ES is uh, moving back and forth more in a little bit more of an erratic fashion. It's a little hard to read. Goes down to 6.50, goes down to 4 ends up stopping there at 3, 275, right? Bounces back up, 
heads back up towards 8 eventually here. After I went to 1, I forgot about that. So it heads back up to 8. So 10.05 to 10.22, it bounces around, goes a little bit lower, bounces up, goes lower back to 1, goes back to 8, right? Now it's heading the other direction. Heads the other direction, heads up to about 30, 13 here, 13.50. Stalls out. Pulls back to 8.9 again, right? goes back up, comes back down, and so you have this back and forth in this area, and it's quite a bit more choppy, and then eventually it sells back down to 8, goes through 8 again, back down to 7, 6, you know, and then back at, back at 8. So the point to that is it was trading 8 at 10.05 a.m., and it's trading 8 at 11.11 a.m., right so obviously no trend no breakout play is whatever and in that situation sometimes people can figure out a range and play it well you know in the ES sometimes they struggle so again just for the purposes of this video let's say a guy is very good at playing breakouts and fast runs but he's not so good at this type of activity he can't really get a, a solid high probability read and the reason he will struggle if he doesn't have discipline is because he'll keep trying to fire off trades in a completely different type of action and so if he takes up one trade in here let's say he thinks the market's going lower earlier right so he ends up selling at four or three snaps back in his face and he blows out at seven or eight and then he waits now the market's running up kind of goes through 10 11 he buys 11 or 12 touches boom drops back down to eight again goes down to seven he blows out again let's say and he takes two trades like that and now he's got two losses in a row that needs to be a sign for him that obviously this is a choppy uh, day and it's going to be much more difficult to get a read and looking for breakouts probably isn't a great um, idea and in the same regard even trying to find the the edge of the range can be difficult sometimes on days like this. So it might just simply not be for him. And if he will recognize that in the moment, um, ideally even before he takes loss number two, but you know, if you take two losses in a row, certainly if you have three losses in a row, you have to acknowledge it, stop trading, stop the bleeding, um, and just say, all right, this is definitely not my day. I don't need to be digging a hole. I don't need to give back the money, you know, I maybe made the day before or that's, that's the concept. Okay, so I think you get the point. Point is, if a guy has a strategy with which works very well during one-way streets, and he can spot those, and he's good at trading them, if he's going three for three, four for four, five for five, and he's crushing, there's no reason to let up. Just keep hitting it and playing that strength of yours until finally it doesn't work anymore, or until you can see that the action's changing. And that happens a lot too. There's Frequently you'll see periods where the market is great trading for maybe 30 or 40 minutes, and then it just dies and stops moving, you know, and, there, and there's very little you can do. So you, you wanna keep pressing to make as much as you can on those really good days. And then if you have a, another day where you log on and you try one or two trades, um, like on September 1st, let's say, and both are losers right off the bat. And after an hour, the ES is trading the exact same price it was when you first started, right? Then that's a signal that probably you're not gonna do very well. Your strategies aren't gonna work. You're not gonna be able to read it and just quit, you know? I mean, maybe wait for the day to see if something changes an hour, two, three hours later, but certainly stop for a while and take a break, take a breather. And, and often the best thing to do is to stop for the day because if you don't turn off the screen, you just keep trading and donating more and more money to the other people. So I always like to throw a little bit of math into my videos and make the point of how this adds up over the course of time. A lot of people dismiss it. So, and, and here's what happens. What happens is a person might make three, four, five trades and he may only be, 
let's say it's break even, right? He's not up, he's not down, it's break even. Obviously, the market's not conducive to his style. And he thinks, well, I'll make one more trade here and I'll risk two takes. And what difference does it make? It's only two takes. And that's the way that he thinks about it. All right. The problem is if you take just five trades a month, which you absolutely know you should not take, and those five trades cost you an additional 10 ticks per contract for the month, uh, the five trades multiplied by two ticks, let's just say, that is 100 ticks per contract given away for no reason over the course of a year, right? So in the 10-year note futures, uh, that equates to $1,562 per contract. So a 10-lot trader who consistently makes these errors cost himself over $15,000 a year, right? In the moment, because you're agitated that you're not making money or that you're losing and clearly not seeing it, that thought of, well, what difference does it make? It's just another two ticks. It takes you down that path. And so your emotion allows you to give away two ticks as though it's nothing, even though you know 100% you should not be taking the trade. And it doesn't seem like much, but as you can see, over the course of a year, it's huge. And that's why you have to struggle every single day to maintain your self-control and just quit when you realize that you are um, not seeing it, right? So you have to play the long game and view it from a year-end perspective. Most traders don't think of it that way because most traders needed their profits yesterday to pay overdue bills. And that is the reality that the majority of traders they need money today. They're trying to trade their way into their rent money for the next month or the car payment, um, right? They're pushing themselves too much on a daily basis and professionals have a bankroll. So if a professional has a, a two, three week period where it's just not working for him, he's okay because he can still pay his mortgage and still pay his car payment, you know, and still has money to trade with when it's good. That really is something that also a lot of educators don't tell people and don't fully explain. Um, there's no substitute for a bankroll and the majority of professionals aren't looking to make money every day. They're looking to make a lot of money on their good days and minimize the damage as much as possible on the bad days and then have it balance out over the course of the year to a decent return on investment. So on a daily basis, just try to remember that you don't have to make money every day. You're not going to make money every day is the reality. Wait for your spot. Wait for the days that are best for you. Don't give away money when it's obvious that you're not seeing it. Stop the bleeding as soon as possible when you recognize it. And remember that you're just clicking a mouse and watching blinking numbers on a screen, right? There's no reason to become enraged at the universe and throw good money after bad. The story came to mind um, after I recorded everything else. So if it sounds like this has been spliced in, it's because it has been. Uh, a gentleman contacted me who, he wasn't a brand new trader. He'd had some experience and been at it for a while, but he wasn't real experienced. I think he'd been trading for a few months. And in March, he made uh, a lot of money. And you know, I don't know exactly what he was doing, but I imagine he was catching some of those huge moves and uh, probably uh, got a little lucky and got on the right side of some of the limit up moves or limit down moves. Well, he was able to show that statement to a prop firm and uh, they backed him as a remote trader for their company. April, May, and June, he lost money. And I think he contacted me first of June, the first or second week of June. And he told me this short story and he said, you know, I went to the prop firm management and asked them, you know, for help, what could I do? And they said, well, just do whatever you did in March. Now, that is an absurd response from people who have been trading in the, you know, for years and who run a prop firm. What happened in March with the lockdown and the sell-off in the markets is a once-in-a-lifetime situation. It is highly unlikely we will ever see anything resembling that again. I won't put it out of the ballpark, given what we're seeing now um, in terms of civil unrest and the unpredictable election. And so, you know, we may very well have um, some 
mass of volatility again. But that was a very particular type of thing, particularly with, uh, with the sell-off, you know, being as harsh as it was. I, we're not going to see companies that are obviously not going out of business dropping down to 2 $3 per share. You know, that's just not going to happen again. Um, there'll be too many buyers that will step in front before it ever gets there. So the point of this is I had to explain this to the gentleman. And I, you know, said, look, dude, March was exceptional you're, you're not going to see something like that you need you're going to have to now adapt basically and learn how to trade in less volatility you know if you want to um, make it in this business but the reason that i wanted to share this in this video is because it's a real testament to just uh, sometimes you know people ask me about working in a prop firm and they think man if i could just get a job at a prop firm I, that would i would make it I'd be successful and honestly that's just not the case uh, there are some good you know firms out there that really do work with their traders but there are a lot that don't they just they hire 20 traders and they just hope that one or two of them become star traders and make tons of money and then they try to uh, not lose too much on the other guys they hire I mean really that's all they do I, I didn't learn anything from my management at the prop firms where I worked I did have the ability to sit there and uh, watch the markets every day and that's kind of how I eventually made it but they didn't teach me anything I learned on my own so it's you know frustrating that people who were supposed to be helping him and mentoring him didn't explain how different conditions require a different approach you know so I think that's the one thing I wanted to really probably illustrate um, even more than the psychological aspect in this video obviously you have to maintain your self-discipline everybody knows that internally we just choose to ignore it sometimes but a lot of people really don't understand how context can be so drastically different from day to day even hour to hour and they don't realize that what might have worked one month isn't going to work the next three months you know so it is great when it happens and you know it's awesome you try to press it like he did but when it's done you have to acknowledge that it's done and you're like all right that was fun made some money but clearly it's finished so now i got to go back to using some kind of a different strategy that calls for probably tighter stop losses and, and smaller profit targets and so you know it annoyed me that they said that to him because if they had taken some t the time to explain the difference in conditions and how he should probably adapt he may not have lost as much as he did in may and june you know if he understood the concept a little bit earlier so really they're to blame for um, pro at least part of the losses that he took later in the year as a final note this is mainly for people who are overseas that don't uh, follow u.s politics but the election is on november 3rd in the united states however there is going to be mail-in voting this year for it and that's going to create chaos we might not know who the winner is for several weeks after november 3rd and i really think that's going to lead to probably some serious volatility in the markets uh, i think liquidity will start to drop heading into that week and possibly for several weeks afterwards so we might see some fairly large moves i don't it's not going to be anything like march was but it might be fairly large and uh so just be on the ready for that and prepared for it probably don't want to be holding overnights during that time period unless you're prepared for multiple limit up or limit down days okay so just a word to the wise so i hope you guys found this video helpful and thank you for watching